I found this workshop to be well organized and very, very informative. I feel that my batteries have been recharged in the SRF community from coming here. My idea about the workshop, it's, it's exactly that, helping us build bridges across continents, across oceans, in order to address the technical problems for thin films. I think uh, it was a, a, um, a very refreshing workshop. Um, they, you know each other after a while, and uh, there are no parallel sessions. You have the opportunity to make personal contacts. Uh, it's, it's a great thing, and the setting, of course, is wonderful, too. And we had a wonderful evening yesterday. <laughs> this workshop has been very enjoyable and very instructive. As always, I've learned a lot from coming as I do from outside the SRF community. It's been very, very educational, and I look forward to, to attending more. And if I may, on a personal note, just say that the organization of a workshop is always crucially important. And this one has been organized superbly. And may I second your comment from last night that very often in these workshops, the spiritual leader is important, but there's also someone who really does all the work. And that's obviously, obviously Dr. Sylvia Martin, who should be commended for how well she's put this together. That was great. It was one of the best, best workshops I can come, usually. Oh, yeah, very happy with the workshop. Very successful, as every one of them has been. Yeah. Claire, at one point, uh, came up to me, Claire Antoine, and uh, said to me, you know, I've been preaching the material science for 20 years now. And uh, I said to her, you know, I agree 100%. This, uh, and we actually accepted this statement back then. But it was too difficult for us to understand all this. And this workshop, we see now two communities coming together, the community of material scientists who don't, ob it's obvious from some of the questions that were posed, who don't necessarily understand SRF, but who are willing to learn SRF, and the people from SRF who are coming together with the material scientists and are willing to learn the material science. So I think this is something where we have a chance through this workshop to reach out uh, to, a, to a new community and to really innovate, think out of the box and come up with new systems that will take us to the next generation. You are a deep observer. The thin films will enable the reduction of cost if we can succeed, and I think we will. And so we have a, a great opportunity to enable the next technology that is needed for the accelerators. I, I believe that technology transfer and this collaborative development that you've described between industry or entrepreneurs and academicians is crucially important. Specifically, in these complex problems, it's very easy to waste a lot of time chasing uh, useless avenues. And it's that good collaboration between university people and entrepreneurs that's likely to narrow the range of possibilities and therefore accelerate development. From the past experience, uh, what we can say, how can you extrapolate uh, the trend? Uh, see, cheaper? The, the route to the future for SRF is thin films in order to have cheaper systems, more powerful ch systems, and more compact for more applications. Industrial applications, research applications, the, the, the pressure is to, is to facilitate that in a, a very economical way, uh, and, and it, all of that requires thin films. In the regime now where the systems that we've worked on for 20 years and more are uh, pushing up at a limit, and uh, the um, applications require us to do much better in the future, and therefore innovation, and this is where the thin film workshop, I think, is uh, an, an incredibly important aspect. The innovation to think out of the box, coming up with new systems is uh, absolutely essential to be able to realize these new machines. I was very impressed by the session on uh, understanding the sort origins of RF losses. That was a nice, very nice session. I learned all kinds of new things here that I was not aware of. So. First of all, congratulations for your work. It's really excellent. Thank you. But, uh, you must explain me something. Uh, I was surprised that, that uh, in uh, an industry, in a private firm in the United States, you are doing uh, top-level uh, university academic research. How is it possible? 
Um, that's a good question, Enzo. Uh, there's a program in the U.S. which is referred to as the Small Business Innovation Research Program, SBIR. And this is a government-funded program that allows small businesses to propose innovative research, but which has an eventual commercial goal. And I emphasize eventual. Unlike venture investors who would demand results on the short time scale, two or three years, this government program allows small firms to pursue somewhat riskier, innovative research with a long-term goal. And the long-term goal in this case is the potential to have a thousand commercial accelerators that are based on SRF if we make the breakthroughs that are needed. But the SBIR funding allows a small firm such as mine to do research at a more basic level. And so that's how we get away with it. Hyperms has a lot of promise. We don't know for sure at this moment if this is the way to go. Uh, but it has all the promise because we have control of iron energy, we have directionality, we can make conformal coatings, we have the way of controlling texture. And with all these ingredients in place, I'm very optimistic that HyPIMS is a possible technology. You can invent any process. Uh, those happen to be invented for particular purposes or by accident. I think the, what we're doing now is understanding the nature and structure of a successful film, the kind we want. And once you know that, you can easily invent a delivery mechanism, a system to do that. And that may be a process that has a different name. Maybe it'll be a variant of, of uh, high peak power magnetron sputtering with a substantial degree of, of um, uh, ionization. Jens, what's your advice? High Q or high field? Well, I would, uh, and certainly coming from the community that I'm working in, I would say the high Q is actually the most important. Um, if you're talking about high field in excess of 50 megavolts per meter or so, because we have many applications in future uh, that require CW machines that have to operate uh, simply, reliably, light sources, for example, big light sources, but also the smaller machines for industrial applications, laboratories that don't actually want to deal with cryogenic aspects, where they want to have a machine that uh, they can switch on and run. And I think uh, the dream there would be to have uh, cavity systems that have such a low Q that I can run them with a very simple cryogenic plant at a field level 20 megavolts per meter, something on that order. Um, Charlie Reese was uh, talking about uh, having uh, machines that have low integrated system cost per megavolt per meter. And the Q is one of those aspects, but there's much more to it uh, to make a CW machine. So we really have to think about the integrated system from the RF to the Q uh, to be able to come up with these applications that are important not just to accelerator, uh, the accelerator community, but to other laboratories, uh, applications, medical applications, and so on, where uh, the whole unit can work as a nice CW system. Well, okay. on Monday you said that in describing our community and looking at all the problems in the world, you did say we are somewhat privileged to be allowed to do what we do. And I resonate with that because I feel very, very privileged to be able to get research money while existing in a private firm and most importantly to collaborate with universities and my dream would be to extend that collaboration to to work with Europeans and others too and not just be restricted to US collaborations. Yes, it's, it's critical to build the collaborations that are needed to bring the multi disciplines together. That's what the DOE money, current money allows us to do is to, to involve technical expertise outside of the laboratories in ways that converge. My group is too small to cover all the range of uh, synthesis, characterization, um, in particular also knowing about uh, superconductivity. And I think that applies to many groups. Uh, we need enough critical mass by combining our capabilities.
So it seems that Los Alamos is doing an important progress for uh, SRF, thinking and for new ideas in uh, SRF. Yes, we got 2.5 million dollars for five years from this year. So we have sort of a lot of money to work on thin films. Just uh, one, yes. uh, one question. What do you think? Will uh, thin films have a future for SRF? Uh, the future of SRF era is, is thin films. There is no future for SRF without thin films. Yeah.